Hi everyone, I'm Adiksha from Simple Crowdfunding and we're running a series of interviews with property professionals just to understand a little bit more from their standpoint in terms of what's happening in the marketplace. So today I'm joined by Cam Devedi, who is an investor developer with 29 years worth of property experience and he also runs a property education company called Premier Property. Thank you so much for joining us, Cam. Thank you for having me, Atiksha. Um, Cam, before we get started and talk about what's happening in the current environment and how it's affecting property, can you just tell everyone a little bit about who you are and about your journey in property, please? Who I am, I'm just a normal guy, uh, investing in property for over 29 years and uh, when I started, I started back in 1989. To be fair, if I'm completely honest with you, back then, 29 years ago, I didn't know anything about property and I just really fell in and it was a very challenging time like we have right now. Back in 1989, interest rates were, my mortgage interest rate, if I remember right, from Leeds and Holbeck Building Site, it was 17%. I mean, wow. you know what rates we have right now, so it was nuts, yeah. <laughs> and, um, if I'm completely honest with you, you know, I was two weeks away from re repossession and I didn't know what to do. And I just thought, you know what, why don't I just rent these rooms out room by room because everybody wants to rent out room by room. Um, mm. However, back then landlords weren't doing that. And the aim of the game was to, by the end of the month, actually have enough money to pay the mortgage. Um, however, what I found was to my surprise that there was a nice pot of money left over at the end of each month. Mm. And really good and I created a system for that and I love creating systems I love creating processes and you know fast forward to today you know we do many different types of projects um, anything between 7 to 12 projects on a monthly basis buy to lets HMOs developments um, and I also train good people on how to do it from a practical approach because that's what we are investors and developers and you can't help but to share if um, I believe you know if you're good at something and that's your subject then you know why just just for yourself and why just your family why not help others in this as well and um, that's a really interesting approach and when we were speaking earlier this week you had a really interesting um, viewpoint with regards to what's currently happening within the property cycle marketplace now you've actually been through a number of different property cycles haven't you and you were part of the 2008 but uh, recession but also um before that can you talk a little bit about that yeah so I, th I think you're talking about the conversation we're having about the market cycle um hence we're doing this video uh, so yeah i mean i've been through the recession over three times in my life mm -hmm. and what i've noticed about that is that um, the property market cycle from an investor's point of view i'm not talking about an economist's point of view or an analyst's point of view i'm just talking about from a common sense point of view in terms of what we see happening in the property market cycle, there seems to be a pattern that happens every single time in exactly the same way. And the conversation that we were having was that, um, you know, actually what's happening is expected. Mm. However, there's always a different reason for it. So we know, you know, right now, unfortunately, it's a very sad case, isn't it, with this COVID, you know, 19, how, how many people are losing their lives, and, you know, very unfortunate. But if we, you know, put that to, you know, just we just con concentrate on the property side of things, um, what we're finding is um, it's, it's the same thing that's been happening back in 2008 and back in 1989 as well. And there seems, like I say, this, um, this, uh, this, this, this um, pattern that, that it follows and it's following this pattern uh, right now. So in this pattern, uh, we assess this at Premier Property that, first of all, um, there are six parts to the market cycle. We're not going to go into all of that right now, I, I know. Um, but in the sixth part, sixth part of the market cycle, there tends to be this little bit of gentle uplift after a little bit of a challenging time. So, for example, you know, we can, we can assess right now we, where we had Brexit. So Brexit happened. Before Brexit, we know that there was some uncertainty. And then after Brexit, when we knew that, you know, a government was going to be in and we know that, right, we know what the plan is um, and, and it was more confirmed, if you notice in the property market, you know, if you assess the data, if you have a look at ONS, if you have a look at land registry data, if you measure, you know, what, um, you know, good, um, good quality companies like HomeTrack 
are showing in terms of data. I like to work on facts. At Premier Property, we're all, always working from facts. We can notice that there was this gentle uplift in property prices. Um, mm -hmm. this, um, maybe you know, people listening in right now have um, had that um, happen for them as well in their area. And then what happens in this pattern, as, as I'm calling it, we find that something happens where there is a drastic change. There is an explosion of some type. Now, back in 2008, we know it was the banks, you know, not having any money. I mean, who would have thought that? And this time around, we absolutely have uh, this um, horrible, horrible, you know, disease, I'm going to call it, you know, this COVID-19, you know, affecting so many people's lives. Um, you know, quite tragic. But in terms of the property market pattern, that this, you know, from our view at Premier Property, seems to be the instigator that is now, you know, allowing the property market to head towards a downward spiral, which actually there is massive opportunity right now. So if you think about it, every time this recession happens, there tends to be an eight to 12 week period mm -hmm. when there is complete disillusion. People don't know what to do. There's a lot of scaremongering out there and the media is doing that quite well right now amongst the facts. You know, they're doing quite a lot, aren't they? Um, so, you know, people just, just don't know what to do. They're just stuck or some people just give up. But it's people like us, you know, people like all of us here, you know, watching this video because, you know, at the end of the day, if you're watching this video, you're, uh, I'm, I'm assessing that you're, you're looking to find a solution. You're looking to find ways to actually move forward. And really, you know, people like all of us here, you know, we have that proactive approach. And the first eight to 12 weeks are such great opportunity in property uh, like we're finding right now, um, you know, we're doing deals in lockdown and it happens and that 12 weeks where your competition have fallen away, you, you know, you have prices where people can understand why you're offering a discount. All of this, you know, is happening in this 12 weeks. After the 12 weeks, we are heading towards a recession. Mm -hmm. Now, with, with this particular recession, it's quite crystal clear, isn't it, that, uh, you know, uh, GDP is falling. We, mm -hmm. we know that. However, formally, we can't be in a recession until... Uh, you know, may, we may or may not know that uh, it's a case of having two quarters of negative GDP, which is on its way, isn't it? So after that 12 week period, which we're going through right now, through this lockdown and all of that, there's massive opportunity. And then we have two quarters of great opportunity in property as prices begin to align and become more uh, stable and, and they become more, uh, how can I say, you know, we can take opportunity from that. Uh, then the recession will be announced after the two quarters because it needs to be two quarters of negative growth. So at that point, it will be formally uh, recognised that we're, we're in a recession. But the thing about property is um, it follows a pattern and everyone understands that UK property is really good. It's a great asset class to be investing in. And it's just having a system and a process which allows you to really take use of these um, massive opportunities. Although it doesn't feel too great out there. That's, that's, you know, that's for sure. You know, we can, however, we can feel great by taking control of all our lives and in, in terms of property, you make money from that and have a better, better life. You know, that's, um, that's my perspective from this pattern that I find. No, and that's incredibly insightful. So um, one of the things that we were talking about before was about um, the 2008 recession uh, or the downturn that was actually a huge opportunity for you, wasn't it? Which you weren't able to embrace in um, 89, but as a result of it, you then worked up to get yourself into a better position in case it happened again. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, to be fair, Atuksha, um, I was looking for people that uh, could help, could uh, who knew the, who had the information, Mm -hmm. But what I found back then was there weren't people that really wanted to share. Um, and if anybody did share anything, they didn't want to share, you know, wholeheartedly and openly on what the actual process is. Because mm -hmm. really, when you think about it, it's, you know, what I like to do is, you know, use other people's experience with their permission, you know, get the process, get the system and, and really fast track uh, what mm -hmm. you're doing. Unfortunately, I didn't have that luxury. That's my reason or that's my excuse back in 1989. Because if I knew what I know now, we would have done things so much faster. But I, I had to build those systems at Premier Property for ourselves. You know, that took time. But in that time, yes, I did become financially free. And financial freedom, to be fair, I mean, what is that? You know, um, I would say the first stage of that is replacing your current income, whatever that is, whether you're PAYE or whether you're in business, 
I'm not saying you have to give up your job or you have to give up your business. All I'm saying is that, you know, you know, you can get to a stage like I did where you had enough income to replace what you was currently doing. Now, and that's me, through income through property, isn't it? Yeah, income through property. Yeah. And, it, and it, to be fair, it didn't take, take a lot, really, once we have a cookie cutter system in place mm. to actually do that. Um, and well, you know, I remember was it, I was 25 when I, I think the first time I got financially free because um, I've never really had a proper job. I'm a little bit naive and I just do things. Um, I like to keep that gentle naivety because it keeps the doors open as a professional yeah. property investor. Um, so, um, yeah, but the age of 25, I, at the top of my head, we, I think I had four or five HMOs at that time. And that was about four or five K income coming in on a monthly basis, which you know, for most people, um, for me, certainly at that time was enough. Uh, money that you need to be replacing and income so these are things that of course um, I share with other people easy ways of actually moving forward and right now is I strongly believe a golden opportunity that's not going to come along for the next decade probably eight to ten years we're not going to see the same situation in terms of where we are in property right now um, and I, I really feel it's a strong a strong solution back then I couldn't find the people no one really wanted to share um, right now, it's, it's a different perspective. And, and through the education programs that you run, you do share a lot of your different property strategies and you tailor them to what's currently relevant in the marketplace, don't you? Well, many people say that we're very real. You know, uh, people that train with us, they say, you know, I share current information. See, the fact is, all, all I'm sharing is what I would want, want to be hearing about, you know, and that is what we are doing at Premier Property currently. So, mm -hmm. uh, like what I say, we're active investors and developers, not just 12 years ago, we're active investors and developers right now. Um, even in the, in the lockdown, we've done four deals on desktop where, you know, we've generated £131,000 of discounted deals. Four deals. Now, I'm not saying that to impress you, but, you know, really to impress upon you that, it's quite cool, you know, when you have a system and a process that you, you can just, just follow and it's the way it works. Yes, we adapt, you know, you got to adapt and that's what we're doing right now. And all I share with people is, like I say, what we are exactly doing right now. That way, you know that the information is genuine. That way, you know, we know that the information that's being shared is working because there's proof of it. And that's, that's what I do. Just because, you know, I train people, you know, I don't, on my business, I don't make money really for, I, my, foremost business isn't training people our foremost business is investing and developers and to be fair we make more money investing and developing than we ever do in education although i love doing it to be fair and i wrap and package in different ways uh, i don't know it's just the way some people are built right so i just love sharing on what is actually working right now and people do say and make comments like this very inspiring um, it's changed so many people's lives for the better in terms of their finances um it makes me feel good as well <laughs> really well, that's true, isn't it? It's true, isn't it? If you see other people succeeding alongside you, that's always a wonderful position to be in, isn't it? So yeah, it's very exciting. It's a bit of a driver as well. You know, it keeps you driving yeah. you because it means that you you've got to get it right yourself, right? So if you're gonna you know, if we're gonna share information with other people on how to do things like this, um, you know, you've got to get it right yourself. So yeah, yeah, but that's so true. <laughs> So tell me about, so because I know you run a number of um, events up and down the country, COVID has, has obviously affected that, but tell me how else COVID has affected your business and what you've done to accommodate for still being able to continue. Mm.